Dear Journal, reflecting on how easy it is to be inspired by the beauties along this Gulf Coast. But to me, the most inspiring aspect of this area is always its people. And we've met some wonderful examples recently, beginning with a man who, in a way, is a double inspiration. He is inspired by the landscape, we by his stunning interpretations of it. It isn't New England, but even here on the Gulf Coast, autumn brims with color. But none of these colors tempts photographer Clyde Butcher. When faced with Mother Nature's vibrant palette, he turns a colorblind eye. Color is very distracting. As an art form, I, 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 say, I feel that color is a duplication of nature and black and white is an interpretation. Just footsteps from civilization, Clyde discovers treasures most of us time-strapped humans miss. Okay. Perfectly composed scenes that are untamed, unspoiled, untouched. One of the problems with photographers is they have a preconceived idea of what they want to photograph. If you just go out and let the world come to you, you'll find it, whatever it is. Ah. His cameras are oversized, look antiquated, and so does his art. Each scene seems to have been taken before amusement parks and malls and condos took over Florida. One of the crucial things about my work is that people realize things are still there. I've had people uh, think that it was all gone. All this, you couldn't see this anymore. It's harder to find than it used to be, but there's an awful lot of native, pristine places in Florida. Take a reading. Twelve and a half. The purpose of his vast landscape art is twofold. To excite us about our natural surroundings and touch a conservational nerve. Some of the areas in Florida have improved the environment, and obviously some have deproved. <laughs> you know, every time you put in a, a Sam's or a, a Home Depot, it's 10 more acres gone. His panoramic scenes beckon viewers. I really feel that my work uh, describes a feeling of nature, not a picture of nature. In other words, when you, my large images, you feel like you can walk into them. That's what I want you to do. Sixty-two-year-old Butcher has been called the Ansel Adams of the Everglades, a title he wears respectfully. But he quickly points out distinct differences between their works. Yeah, that's... But we do need the light. Do need the light. Yeah. Uh, Ansel Adams mostly photographed things where I do spaces. It was, he used long lenses, I used sh short lenses. It's, it's, um, but the quality of the printing, the light, that's what people see. It's the quality there, not the compositions. In college, Clyde studied architecture. Ironic, one might think, for a man now so passionate about stifling urban development, but not so, says he. If you look at my work, they're very architectural. They're spatial. Um, I try to create spaces so you can feel like you're there. Space is sacred in and out of his photographs. People deliberately absent. There's a lot of times I love to have people to give scale. But when you put a person in, you've taken the viewer out of the picture. When that person's in that space, that's his space. If there's no people in it, then he can be, that can be his space, or your space. People are scarce around Clyde's living space, too. 
He and his wife Nikki live in the heart of the Everglades in a place called Loose Screw Sanctuary. Story goes you have to have a loose screw to live there. Most of our neighbors walk around on four feet. I would have never guessed in a million years I'd end up living in a swamp. In the belly of the glades, Clyde uncovers beauty not found on a mountain or in a canyon. The Everglades is a living, creeping, crawling organism. It's full of life. But it's strange, though. You can't always see it, but you can feel it. My Zorro trick. When asked if he considers himself an artist or an environmentalist first, he answers, yes. I'd rather be called an educator almost than a photographer or an artist. If you want to call my work art, that's fine. But I, I really do it to get people inspired about the environment because it's so precious and so easy to destroy. I'm so glad to meet you. Judging by the book signing line at a recent gallery exhibit, his inspiration appears to be contagious. The majority of people move to a city to get away from nature, to protect themselves from the bears and, <laughs> and the mosquitoes and all that stuff. But in their heart, they really miss this, because this is where you can re-nourish your life. This is where you came from. He often visits the Gulf Coast to sail and re-nourish his own soul. Even here, Clyde exposes familiar landmarks in a new light. Everybody is just too fast today. Everybody, everything's going too fast, and, and, and hopefully my work slows people down. The, the beaches are beautiful. Mayaka State Park is really great. There's, there's all kinds of little intimate spots here in, in the uh, Gulf Coast that people can visit and uh, enjoy photographing, and just canoeing, beaching. But sometimes you have to go a little slow It took a tragedy in his life to slow down his once hectic pace. In 1986, his teenage son, Ted, was killed in a car crash. Clyde turned to the Everglades for comfort and discovered that it too could be lost just as easily. When you have a tragedy in your life, you can either go positive or negative, which is kind of like photography, positive and negative. If you go positive, you make something worthwhile of his life. And I thought that was really important to make something good out of something that was bad. It brought the family closer. Today, his daughter Jackie owns the gallery in Venice, which is devoted to her father's work. Housed in the back is Clyde's pride and joy, a 1,600 square foot dark room. This is like playing the score of the music. Uh, this is where what you do in the field translate to a piece of two, two dimensional piece of paper. Several enlargers help produce the prints ranging in size from eight by 10 inches to five by eight feet. You ready? Clyde's secret weapon is his darkroom assistants who combine chemistry with artistry to help achieve his vision. The negative that Clyde will capture out in the field is only part of the whole journey. So here in the dark room, we need to bring to fruition the rest of the story by printing out a particular photograph in his taste, his style, what he's trying to accomplish. So it's very simple. You might say it's primitive. The most important tool that we have in here is our imagination. When I came to Florida, I didn't see anything to photograph. There was just nothing to photograph. Now there's so much here, I haven't got the time to do it. Colorful character, colorful life. But Clyde Butcher's powerful message is as simple as black and white.